All righty. Our last talk of the day is from my colleague here, uh, Tyler Crane on Alexio Journal uh, Evolution. So Tyler recently joined Alexio and working on distributed system uh, was Alexio Core. Uh, before this, Tyler uh, just got his postdoc position <laughs> at the University of Sydney and at Southern Universities, where he performed research and topics including distributed key value store and distributed consensus and blockchain. Uh, he also received uh, his PhD from, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, <laughs> University of Rennes, or Rennes, Tyler correct me later, so <laughs> where he worked on transactional memory, and he also holds a master's degree in computer science from University uh, of Santa Barbara. Um, I think it's UC Santa Barbara, right? That's where you went. So <laughs> let's hear from Tyler, uh, Lexio Journal Evolution towards high availability and fault tolerance. Take it away. All right, thank you. Um. Yep, can see you now. Okay, good. Okay, thanks. So I'm going to talk about how the Alexio journal has evolved um, for high availability and fault tolerance. <clears throat> so let's take a basic look at the architecture of Alexio. Um, you have the clients that are going to be interacting with the file system. Um, you have the master, which is going to be coordinating the file system. Uh, keeping the metadata about where the files are and the structure of the file system. Um, you have the worker, the Luxio workers, which are going to be caching the data and storing the data of the actual files um, in blocks. And then you have the UFS underneath the uh, under file system, which is going to be HDFS or S3 or whatever, um, where the actual data is, uh, is going to be stored. Um, and so, and within the master, you have the, the metadata. So there's different layers. Um, one of them is the inode tree, which is the structure of the file system. And then another one um, is the state of the workers, um, where, the, where the blocks are located on the workers, for example. And then you have the journal underneath, which is basically the events, uh, the modifications to the metadata as a series of events over time. So how do we think about fault tolerance here? So if we think about the workers, they can be replicated, they can act as a cache for the EFS. Um, so they can, they can fail and be restarted. Um, and then the UFS itself, it has its own fault tolerant guarantees. Many are high available and have, have different fault tolerant guarantees. Um, and so, and then in this case, the master becomes the single point of failure because every operation has to go through the master to figure out the, the metadata of where the files are located. And um, um, so the first the clients will contact the master and then the master will tell them if, if the file is here, here's the worker to go to, or you have to retrieve the file directly from the US, UFS, for example. Um, so now, so we have to think about how we can make this master fault tolerant. Um, and so the first thing we think about is the journal. So as I mentioned before, the journal is located on the master. And it is basically a, a total order log of events that have uh, modified the metadata. Um, so it's going to contain the, the instructions that, that change the metadata. Um, and so simply, if, if, a node, if the node crashes, for example, and the journal stored on disk, it can replay the events in the journal one at a time to recover the, the state of the metadata. Um, and you can also make snapshots of the state um, at, at certain points in time. 
um, and the snapshot you means you can recover, you can start from that snapshot and then apply only the more recent logs um, to get back to your to your state. So then how do we think about some basic fault tolerance for our, our master? Um, well, we can just make a, a fault tolerant journal. Um, so then if the master crashes, we we just detect the crash, we start a new master on the new master, we connect to the journal, we re replay the journal, um, and then we start serving clients. Um, but the problem with this is that the system might be unavailable during this time. So we have to wait for um, for the journal to be replayed, the new master to start. Uh, so we want to, how do we in, improve the high availability? Well, we can run multiple masters <clears throat> at the same time. And only a single master will be serving the client request, while the other masters will simply replicate the state of the, of the primary master. Uh, and in case of failure, it will, it will take its place. Um, so the primary master will be writing to the journal, while the secondary masters will simply be reading these updates and keeping up to date on the state. So then we can look at this basic architecture. Um, so as we had before, we have the masters, the clients, and the workers. Um, the clients are interacting with the primary master. The master is calling an append for every operation, every modification it makes to its metadata. It's calling an append operation that will append um, the modification as a log entry in the journal. And as the entries are written, uh, the secondary masters will read um, these modifications and they'll replicate the state. Um, so they have all this metadata within their states. Um, and if uh, if the primary master fails, we elect a new primary master from these secondary masters. So that's a basic idea, but to some of the more details that we have to solve here is we want to ensure a single primary master is running at all times. So we need to detect failures. We need to decide who's going to be the new primary master. Um, and the journal itself needs to be fault tolerant. And we need to agree on a valid order of journal entries. Um, so in case um, there's a conflicting uh, primary master, for example, one if one uh, if one node thinks it's a primary master at the same time another node does, um, how can we agree that only one of them writing to the journal is valid? Um, so that's sometimes thought uh, can be described as a consensus problem. Um, so, so I'm going to talk about sort of the first version of how this is solved using ZooKeeper and a UFS and the UFS. So how do we ensure a single primary master is running at a time? Well, you can use ZooKeeper, uh, leader election ZooKeeper recipe. Uh, so ZooKeeper is an open source coordination service um, from Apache, and it gives you a sort of a file system abstraction um, itself where you can uh, clients can access this ZooKeeper system where they can write to something that's sort of like a file system and it's built on top of a atomic broadcast algorithm or consensus algorithm. Um, and so of course this needs to be high availability so um, and fault tolerant so ZooKeeper itself will run on a, a cluster of nodes so for example three nodes to 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 tolerate at least a single failure. Um, and the ZooKeeper, um, the leader election recipe, basically um, clients will subscribe to this recipe and ZooKeeper will choose one of them to be leader. Um, and if it de detects a failure, it will choose a new one as a leader. Um, and then the UFS journal. So we want the journal itself to be have some availability and fault tolerant and consistency guarantees. Um, so the journal entries are written to the UFS by the primary master, which has been elected leader by ZooKeeper. Um, and so 
The recommended uh, H, uh, UFS to use for this is HDFS, and we're going to uh, see why that's a good one to use in the following slides. Um, so first now we have to ask the question is, does the Zookeeper leader election solve our problems? Um, and not quite. Um, so this, there may be some asynchrony in the system, either uh, one of your nodes might be slow um, or there might be uh, a network uh, slowness. Um, so Zookeeper will, uh, when Zookeeper will elect a new leader, it will notice it will notice that the old one is not responding. Um, but just because it's not responding doesn't mean it has failed and it's no longer accessing the journal below. Um, so we want to, and because of this, there might be two primary masters trying to modify the journal at the same time. Um, so we want to add some additional level of protection. Um, to ensure this doesn't happen. And so this is this chart shows the basic uh, uh, protocol for doing this. Um, each each node that each master that starts will start when it starts, it will be a secondary master. Um, and so it will, first it will join the leader election protocol. And one of these will be notify its elected leader. Um, so then it will join this primary master protocol which is this extra coordination step. And this is done through the UFS. Um, and this is why we, why, one of the reasons why HTFS is, is recommended for this is because um, HTFS will, will have a lock on a file, a single writer lock on a file. So um, if, if there's two nodes trying to access the file, the, this primary master protocol will ensure one of them finishes the file. Um, or the, that if it actually did fail, the, the new leader can clean up after this uh, through, the, through, the, uh, through the use of the HDFS. Um, and then eventually the, the new leader will be uh, appointed primary master. Um, and then if, if for, for some reason Zookeeper thinks this node is no longer, should no longer be leader, it will be notified um, by Zookeeper, and then it will step down um, and clean up its or close its file in the in the UFS. Uh, so now we have the sort of architecture of this. Um, as we see, we have this extra uh, system cluster or set of running nodes, um, running Zookeeper, um, which has this leader election recipe, and we have the UFS. Uh, storing the journal uh, with the snapshots, and they're all interacting through these masters. And so, of course, there are some issues with this. Well, we we have uh, multiple systems we have to rely on, and they each have their own fault tolerance and availability models. So the system gets complicated. How you define um, how you define correctness in your system, and you have a bunch of different failure modes and um, and also different UFSs have different consistency models and performance, um, which is why HDFS is, is a good one, but even HDFS has this, has a name node, which is also sort of a single point of failure, so it's, so it's not ideal. Um, so these are the problems we want to solve now. Um, and so I'm going to talk about uh, the, the newer version of the, of the Fault tolerant journal. And just as a side note, I want to mention that, as I said before, the file system metadata is stored on the on the masters, which includes the inode tree. Um, and so this can be stored in memory, but it can also be stored in uh, on disk on Rocks DB. And what's important here is that these are the state of the metadata is actually a set of of key value tables, um, and the journal entries are actually the modifications to these key value tables. Um, so, um, one of these key value stores can be RocksDB, and uh, this allows for 
for the metadata be to be stored uh, partially on disk and on memory so it can so the state of this metadata can grow larger than the memory in the in a single master um, and Alexio adds a in memory cache for fast reads and we're going to see why this is important in the next section so now we're we want to improve the journal by making the system simpler and uh, more fault tolerant and efficient by removing all these extra dependencies. Um, and this is through using Raft. Uh, so what is Raft? So Raft is uh, thought of as a replicated state machine. Um, so when you think of a state machine, you think of uh, something with sort of a, maybe a program with some internal states and there's uh, some state transitions and the program takes as commands as inputs and it, it returns outputs. Uh, so this sort of can be anything, um, but you know, you might just think of it as, as your, your program or uh, for example, like a simple state machine could be a, a stack or you have a push and pop as your commands and they, their outputs are the, um, the pop will output the whatever's on the stack, for example. Um, so then what, what is a replicated state machine? Is it that it's a state machine that has high, high availability and fault tolerance, um, but it still seems to the client who's accessing it, it still seems like a, a sequential uh, single state machine, but it's just highly fault tolerant and available. Uh, so the clients will interact with the state machine as if it's a single instance and you just send the commands and get the responses um, and it's fault tolerant and highly available. High, highly available. Um, so the, and what, what RAF does then is it, is it runs consensus over a set of nodes um, and it has the, each node is running a copy of this state machine. Um, and the state machine, as a note, the state machine has to be de deterministic because it's being replicated over different nodes. Um, and Raft will take care of failures and recovery from failures. Um, the client just has to ac access the, this state machine through this consensus module. Um, and it just sends the normal commands. Um, so now how do we add this to Alexio? Uh, well, we think of our our state, our, our file system metadata as this state machine. So this is these key value stores that I mentioned before. Um, so each each update is is a modification to the key value store, which is sent to this to Raft, um, and then you can read these key values uh, through the uh, through the through this state. Um, through the state machine, which is just the key value store. Um, and this simplification of Raft is that it's going to handle the, the logging that we saw before, um, uh, the, yeah, the journal log, uh, and, it, and it ensures that if a node fails, it will recover and it will replay this log. All you, so all we have to worry about is that um, we, have, we just have to provide this key value store to Raft. Um, so then Raft is running, each instance of Raft is running on one of these masters, um, which is then has this sort of, uh, which allows the master to quickly access the state of the key value store. And then it might have the, this also the state in memory separate um, as, a, as an additional cache. Uh, so, so Raft itself will give us this highly consistent uh, and available key value store and journal. Um, but again, we still want a single primary master that's going to be interacting with the clients. And the reason for this is that um, we only want one node to be sending these, uh, these sort of uh, external updates, which is going to be the, the updates to the UFS and uh, the Luxio workers. Um, 
So even though there's multiple replicas of the state machine, you're still having one at a time uh, exit uh, updating, uh, interacting with the clients and updating the UFS and the, the Luxio workers. Um, so we, there's a leader election uh, built into Raft. Um, so this is just used as before, similar as Zookeeper is used. Um, so since Raft is co-located with the nodes, it will just, uh, a node will start as a secondary master. It will join Raft. Raft might notify it's uh, become the leader. Um, so, and again, we have uh, this primary master protocol because like before leader election isn't perfect. Um, so there may be, due to asynchrony in the system, there may be multiple uh, leaders or primary masters uh, or nodes who think they're leader at the same time. So we add this additional uh, coordination layer to ensure um, that even in asynchrony, that it's highly likely that there's only going to be a single uh, primary master. And this is just sort of an ad additional level of, of coordination that allows a primary master to step down uh, before a new one is uh, elected. Um, and this is the, the new architecture. So as you see, it's a lot simpler. Um, we just have these raft uh, instances co-located with the masters um, and they're communicating with each other through these consensus module. Um, and so Luxio just needs to implement this state machine, which is just the, simply the key value um, state of the file system metadata and Raft will replicate it um, and ensure that if any of these nodes fail, that a new one will be, uh, or that a new one will be selected as the primary master and that uh, a new, any, any new node that, that restarts will recover from the journal um, and get caught up. Uh, so the advantage of this is it's simpler. Um, you don't have any external systems. The Raft takes care of all the logging, the snapshot um, performance. So we don't need to access either a third, uh, this external system like Zookeeper or the UFS to write the journal, since the journal is stored directly on the masters. Um, and you can have things like different key value stores as this state machine within Raft. Uh, for example, rocks, which uh, is efficient for inserts and and the cache can be built on top. Uh, so that's all. If you have any questions. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Um, yeah. uh, thanks for sharing the journey of the journal evolution. Very interesting. Uh, it may take some time for the question to go to the Slack. So again, I'll take the advantage and ask my question. Um, so you mentioned that even with a leader election, there was a challenge of concurrent right to the journal. So mm -hmm. do we still have that challenge now? Or can you elaborate more on how it was resolved in the current version? Yeah, so that problem is always going to exist in an asynchronous system. Um, because there's no such thing as a perfect failure detector. Um, so you may think a leader has, or the primary master has failed, um, but it may just be due to asynchrony in the system in the network um, that is still running. Um, so this is always going to be a problem. It's just simplified with Raft because we don't need to rely on Zookeeper um, instead the um, uh, raft itself is used and the and then just to to be more sure that there's only one running at, at a single time um, Alexio adds some additional coordinate coordination um, to the leader election protocol um, which is basically an extra step that says either either this node times out or it has explicitly stepped down as primary master before the new one steps up. Um, and the problem 
the problem with having two primary masters is that um, these operations are uh, modifying external state, which is the UFS and the Alexio workers. Um, so you want to to ensure as much as possible that there's only a single primary master running at a time. Cool. Uh, would you mind make the slide bigger? Um, right now it's a little bit shrinked. Um, so the second question we have is, is there any implication in one performance and two scalability of the metadata service by going to raft approach? Um, so in terms of scalability and performance, so they both should be better um, because in this original architecture, you're still doing the, the same work you have to do in Raft. Um, you're still running consensus. Uh, you're still having to write to an available um, journal store and you still have to have multiple secondary masters running. Um, so by Raft, it, by using Raft, all this ex additional systems are co-located with these masters. Um, so the performance is going to be better. Um, and you're not, you're not relying on an additional, uh, point of failure or slowness. For example, if the UFS doesn't scale um, as much as the as the masters do, then you might be uh, have to slow down for these uh, um, to write to the to the journal on the UFS. Um, whereas with Raft, uh, the coordination happens between the masters themselves, um, so you don't have this ex this third additional path. Um, so generally everything is at least, at least as good, but more likely better because you're not having to rely on these additional systems. Um, cool. Sounds good. And... <laughs> yeah. Um, I think a follow up on that, um, is the performance of writing the journal entries might be different. Uh, yeah, it's, it will be faster because so. What happens in Raft is, is it's running this consensus module. So uh, when you try to write to the, to the journal, so you're saying you're committing to this state machine, uh, what Raft will do is it'll run this consensus. Um, it will, and then it will agree to say, okay, this is, this is the next value. Um, and when doing that, it'll store the value on in the log, and then it will apply uh, the update to the state machine. Um, so the log, uh, the log will be stored on disk, but you don't have since you're replicating it, you don't have to sync with disk, so it's a fast. You might it might be uh, uh, have a buffer in memory, so it's fast to write to the log. Um, so the main and then the application to the state machine is just you're you're changing your key value store, um, which you know, which uh, uh, for example would be rocks and even rocks its first layer is, is stored in memory so so it will be eventually flushed to disk but uh, the initial write is just an in memory uh, append to a log so it's all all this is fast um, the main thing is waiting to for the uh, consensus to agree, which is going usually takes uh, one round of, of messages between these nodes. Um, whereas you, here, um, you're going to have to you're going to have to first uh, write through the journal, which which you're going to you're you're going to update your state in your master. Then you're going to write uh, to the UFS. And the UFS itself might be running a consensus protocol, or it might be running um, some other d disk uh, uh, coordination. For example, HDFS, you have the name node, which is going to choose where to write on which uh, uh, storage node to write the, the value to. Um, so there's a, there'll be a bunch of extra steps. 
and then once that's complete, you have to wait for the secondary master to be able to read this update. Uh, um, so it's a bit, uh, it's definitely a lot more steps, which will take, gotcha. could take longer. Gotcha, cool. Uh, that's a question so far. Again, feel free to ask more questions and then the speakers can follow up on Slack. Uh, thank you, Tyler. Um, 